verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. You know, our relationship uh, with God consists of us realizing the areas in which we need reformation and knowing God's guidance so that we can be healed, reformed, and transformed. Only the power of God can change our ways. We cannot do it without His help. So hopefully we can make this a practice because a lot of times we've done things that is not according to God's will. We should just sit, ask God, please Lord, search my heart, renew me. I'm such a wicked person. I'm praying for your guidance and your Holy Spirit to lead in my life. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to share with you a testimony about last year's 10 days of prayer. This testimony is or was written by a person. His name is Harvey. His name is Harvey. He was so looking forward to the 10 days of prayer last year in 2021 mm. but somehow he was admitted to the to the hospital because he had a sudden illness that really upset him because he was such a faithful christian he really wanted to attend the 10 days of prayer he said here he felt so hopeless like my prayers were not enough. Because it says, he said, his condition kept worsening every day. He was admitted to hospital. And as he was lying in hospital, someone had invited him to join the 10 days of prayer. But through a Zoom video call. He was so excited about that. Because at least if he's not in church, he still can attend via a Zoom call. There he was lying in bed every night watching 10 days of prayer. And every night, those that were watching had been asked to pray for Harvey while he was in bed. He says, I praise God for the wonderful souls who fervently prayed for me each night. God has been so gracious to me, I was discharged even before the 10 days of prayer was ended. 10 days of prayer ended. He says here in his testimony, he says, It was the healing power that made me whole. I was sick. And he touched me. It was indeed an answer to prayer. Last night we heard, you know, when we pray in a group, when it's a corporate prayer, it's more powerful. That doesn't mean that, you're, you know, if you pray on your own, it's not powerful. No. But God had said, you know, if you pray in a group, pray for the same thing. That's more powerful. And this is the answer to have his prayer. Everyone that were listening, that could pray, prayed for him. And even before the 10 days of prayer finished, he was healed. He went back to his family. That's a short testimony from Harvey from last year. Just before we go into the message tonight, uh, just like you all, please, just to bow your heads. Well, I offer a short word of prayer. <clears throat> <clears throat> mm. 
your father in heaven I feel like Moses this evening I do not have the wisdom and I do not have the words that I could share but I know through your Holy Spirit Lord you will help me to share this, this message so it be acceptable to those that are listening here in church and those, those, those that are listening online. Father, please, I need your Holy Spirit. May we understand this message fully tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Our 10 days of prayer is uh, focusing around the three angels' message. The three angels' message. And we all know what the three angels' message is. Ever since we have been doing Bible studies, we learn about the three angels' message. We've been told about the three angels' message. But tonight, I'll just focus on the first text in Revelation 14, verse 6. Revelation 14, verse 6. We all read it together. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Uh, John was given this message. You know, he was on exile on the, on the island of Patmos. When God gave him this message. But God did not just give it to him. It was for him. You know to share. God had given this message to this planet. And it was the, most, the utmost importance. In its design. Especially for our time. In the three angels' messages of Revelation 16, Revelation 14, verses 6 to 12. As John was writing this message, it wasn't just him thinking about it and writing it. We all know that. Right? He had a vision. He had a dream. He had a vision. And what he saw, he was writing. And verse 6 says, then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth. So this message must have been real, a really important message. There are three things in this message that we can pinpoint that tells us how important this message is. The three points that... Uh, I'll share with you. The first one is the message was from God. Yeah. The origin of the message was from God. Why? Because angels were God's messengers. He saw angels bringing this message. So the origin of the message was divine it had a divine origin it came directly from the throne of God it is pictured as being given to humanity by an angel that is flying in mid heaven you know you only fly if you are in a hurry to go somewhere eh? if you want to go to Fiji in a hurry you don't catch the boat. Eh? You want to get there as soon as possible. You want to get there as quick as possible. And this is what this message is about. It's about angels flying. So that means what? The message is to be shared in the fastest and the quickest way possible through John. So the angels were flying in mid-heaven. What's the second point? 
The second point to notice about this message is that the angel flies. The message is urgent. That's the second, yeah, that's the second uh, point of this. The message is urgent. It must be proclaimed without delay. You know, when something is flying, you know it's really fast. Eh? It's really going fast. It's getting to its destination quicker than any other form of transport when it's flying. So this is what the message is all about. It's about bringing the message, taking the message to all parts of the world as quickly as possible. And the third part. Thirdly, it is an eternal message that applies to every generation. You see the second part of the last part of the verse. It says, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. It doesn't leave out anyone. Or this message wasn't just for a particular people or particular uh, race. It was a message that was going to be preached to every nation, to every tribe, to every tongue, and every, and every people. You know, we understand in, in this world, you know, there's so many dialects, eh? and we call that a tongue. You know, you can speak your own mother tongue. This message is to be proclaimed in everyone's mother tongue so that everyone will understand. We know there are people that cannot read, cannot write, but the message is being preached to them through what? Listening. They can hear, they can understand. They can understand their mother tongue. The message is being preached to them through radio, through television. And that's the third part of this message. But the heart of this message is the everlasting gospel or the good news. When something is everlasting, it lasts forever. There's no end to it. Eh? It's like a circle, you know. You cannot see the beginning or the end of a circle. This message is just like that. There's no end. It will only end when God comes back. God comes back. That's when this message will be ending. It's about, it's about his coming back too. The heart of this message is the everlasting gospel or the good news of Christ's sacrificial life. His loving ministry, his atoning death, his dramatic resurrection, his interceding high priest ministry, and his glorious second coming. There's nothing that's left out here. We see the life of Jesus here, right from the beginning, when he was born on this earth. You know, he sacrificed his life. He went out and did ministry, teach, heal, preach. He mingled with people that were outcasts. That was his work. And he also died on the cross for our sins. He was also resurrected. He was never going to be dead forever. You know, we were studying our seventh school lesson last week. It talks about death and how Jesus overcame death. Not only did he overcome death, he also had the key. He also had the key to anyone who is dead. He can resurrect them. He's interceding high priest ministry. And that's what he's doing now. He's interceding on our behalf in heaven. He's our high priest. And we are looking forward to his second return. 
And this is what this message is all about. <clears throat> the vision of the everlasting gospel in Revelation 14 confirms Jesus' words. And it's found in Matthew chapter 24. And what does it say? And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. You know, sometimes we, uh, I sometimes think, how can everyone in this world, you know, there are people that live in jungles of Brazil, of Papua New Guinea, and all these big countries, how can they hear about Jesus? But the Bible says that they will hear about Jesus. They will, because it says here, in, a, uh, in Matthew 24, it will be preached in all the world as a witness. It doesn't matter where you live, you will hear God's message. You will hear. You will have the chance of hearing God's message. Christ's words are a promise that the gospel will be preached in all the world before his return. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. You will have the chance, everyone will have the chance of hearing God's word, of hearing the truth. They will be given the chance to accept Jesus and accept Jesus as their savior. There will be a mighty revival among God's people. They will rise to the challenge, realize the urgency of the hour, and filled with the Holy Spirit, Reveal Jesus' love, grace, and truth to a sin-polluted world dying in sin. You know, in uh, the great controversy, page um, 464, Ellen White says it this way. Before the final visitation of God's judgment upon the earth, there will be among the people of the Lord such a revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. When you hear the word apostolic, for me, I think of Paul. You know how he was converted? I think except for Jesus, Paul, the apostle, is the most considered and most recognized as the most significant and influential figure to the Christian church. Because of his witness, because of his enthusiasm, spreading the word of God, he was never a disciple of Jesus. He never saw Jesus. He never sat at Jesus' feet. But, he accepted Jesus' words. And he went through a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of trials when doing this. You can read that in 2nd in second Corinthians chapter 11. I'll just share with you some things that Paul went through while he was sharing God's words. 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 verse, um, verses 25 and 20 to 27. Things that he went through just because he was sharing God's word. Chapter 11, verses 25. Three times, oh, let me start from 24. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. You know, he was beaten. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, I spent a night and a day in the open sea, I have been constantly on the move, I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea and in danger from false 
brothers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. And these are some of the things that Paul went through. Praise the Lord for his life. Eh? Even though he'd gone through all these trials, I think a mere human would have given up. Eh? Shipwrecked, beaten, stoned, would have given up. But here we have this true man of God, this apostle, who endured all these trials because he wanted to share God's word. Because he wanted to share God's word. I'm not saying that might happen to some of us. We never know. If we are so enthusiastic, if we have the Holy Spirit in us, just like Paul, we'll be sharing God's word. Even though we get cursed, we get stoned, get chased, you know, we'll keep doing it.